and welcome. You are now tuned in to Raw, where we only showcase the best up and coming artists today. And today is a Raw exclusive. Not only are we bringing you one artist, but we're bringing you two amazing artists that are taking the industry by storm. And let me give you a little detail of what's going to come up. Now, one artist is signed to Brian McKnight and tours with him, and the other, well, he's the late night champ. Sit back, relax. You will enjoy the show. I'm your host, Crystal Mestres, and let's get it started. Do you know how it feels to be in love and risk it all? Spending all of your time and money just to watch it fall. So cue fade to black, credits roll. Cause it's off in the sunrise and go. Don't you tell Hollywood I'll be back But for now I'll just choose to forget That I'm leaving L.A. Never found what it was Get you on that silver screen Couldn't pay for a room In those famous hills In Beverly So one final bow Curtains close Cause it's all That I'm leaving LA I'll take my time Follow the signs Back to the place Where I left my life I gotta let go It's time to go home Welcome back to a new season of Raw. I'm your host, Crystal Mestrez. And that last song was performed by Matt Cusan, and it's called Leaving L.A. Yes. How are you doing, Matt? Good, how are you? Thank you for coming today. Thanks for having me. Now, what is exactly <clears throat> the premise of Leaving L.A.? Leaving L.A. Is a, is a song, basically a friend of mine. I was on tour uh, last summer, a four-month-long nationwide tour, and it started in Los Angeles, and it went all the way up basically to here. And... Um, as I was leaving L.A., I, you know, it, there, a friend of mine called me who is a, a, an actress who went to L.A. to make it big or whatever you want to call it. And um, 
she was out there for a couple of years and it didn't work out. You know, I think as it does for a lot of people that mm -hmm. go to LA and try to do that. And as I was driving away from LA, it just, it just kind of, it just kind of came. And I actually wrote the song, most of it in the car as I was driving and I performed uh, uh, a joke version of it at, the, at my first show on the tour and it went over really well. So I sit down and wrote it and, and it's been really good. It's actually going to be released on iTunes in about another month, month and a half. Now, first listening to the song, you know, it's crazy how artists have their interpretation. Well, not interpretation. Mm -hmm. You have, you wrote your song and mm -hmm. that's the meaning. But hearing it, you're thinking that you're talking about a special somebody. And yeah. then it completely turns when we have the inside scoop. Now, bringing it back. Okay. How did you start into the music field? I, it's all really I ever did, you know, from, from being a kid and, and giving private concerts to my, to, to nobody in my room, but to my imaginary 20,000 people to, uh, to high school, I started singing at weddings and funerals and, and uh, a couple of school plays. I was a terrible actor though, so I, I didn't, that didn't last very long. From there I went to uh, Berkeley College of Music and I was there for about a year and I actually met um, Brian McKnight, was in town. Was he your idol growing I up? I loved him. When I was, I first heard him when I was like eight or nine. And I was like, this guy's amazing. That's crazy. So from there, uh, yes, yeah, so when I was, uh, when I was at Berkeley, I, uh, he heard me sing and play. And I literally went to the registrar's office, dropped out of school, and he flew me to his house in Los Angeles the very next day. And we recorded three or four songs and, uh. All right. All of a sudden, you're in college, you're mm -hmm. performing, and mm -hmm. you got a call from Brian McKnight? He, was he in, came in? Or? Yeah, he was in Boston doing, a, a, I think, a celebrity basketball game for charity or something. And he, uh, his musical director was, was, a old, was a Berkeley student um, from a few years uh, previous. And uh, Brian said, I want to go to Berkeley and, and play with some of the kids. And he, honestly, there was a little private room, uh, you know, roped off for him. And he came in, and I was in there, and the musical director, a couple teachers were in there. And uh, I was just like this little kid. How nervous were you? I was, I mean, at 18, 19 years old, and, and one of the guys I've listened to for 10 years. But you did the around. thing because he was I like, I to. want him. I had, I, had no, uh, I had no choice but to just, uh, you know, my friend just said, I want to hear Matt play. So I played a corny little song that I wrote when I was a teenager, and that was it. And it's still, I look back, and there's, there's a lot of moments like that that happened in my career that I'm just like, did that really happen? Now, as a young boy, who did you aspire to be? I, I grew up listening to, you know, the greats. James Taylor was one of my favorites. Uh, Stevie, obviously, Stevie Wonder, Brian. Um, I love Paul Simon. I love the Beatles. Of course. Um, you know, I, I didn't, at first, I, I tried, I just imitated them until I was in high school when I was 14, 15, and I started to come into my own. But I would, I would be at the piano doing exactly what Nat King Cole did and sound, singing exactly like Nat King Cole. Or, or Billy Joel, even. I would sing one of his songs, but I would sound just like him. So I think it's important to go through all that to, uh, to find your own your voice own, and your right. own style. You um, had a good quote. Um, it was a video interview that you had. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, people want to mold you and make you yeah. everybody else. But mm -hmm. why not be the first you, which right. I found very interesting. And, and, yeah. and it's true. Yeah, I, I said that um, in a video. I think I was with... Uh, I won the John Lennon Songwriting Award a couple yes, years ago. Yes, we have to get into that. We'll get into that. And I got interviewed by Yoko Ono. And she, oh my God, that was crazy. Like so much history there. Like, and, and the fact that she's interviewing me, that didn't make any sense. I'm still <laughs> like, wait, did that really happen? But, um, yeah, it, it was, you know, the song that I won that award for was a, was a straight ahead jazz song. I write a lot of different styles and that was, so a, how many people auditioned for that contest? Hundreds of thousands. It's, it's a worldwide contest, a worldwide, you know, every, everybody knows it in the music industry and, you know, that award did wonders for me. You know, I was in all sorts of magazines and, and all Forbes and Billboard. It was fun. It was when it happened, it was fun. There was a big press conference. Uh, I was awarded um, the award by Brian McKnight in Dallas during a show. Wow. Right before we actually were supposed to sing back at one, he said, I'm going to need. All right, don't give me all the goods. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> What's your next song? Please next song. introduce it for our I viewers. Believe, uh, yeah. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Only Human. Just a song about how awkward I am. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> For you, it's much too deep to see the point I was getting to. Talk myself into half my size, 
What's left of me does it know when to compromise But I'm gonna hold on tight And give you a little peace of mind And if it don't come out right I'm only human And believe me We are prone to make mistakes Love me and leave me It's an easy choice to make Said I'm only human And I don't know how I ever got this far Humans ain't always right Let's just be animals tonight It's hard to walk with two in the feet Stuck in my mouth But it's all become routine Mama says to control my fear Then rolls her eyes Cause she's had it up to here But I'm gonna hold on tight And quote only Shakespeare and Einstein And if it don't come out right I'm only human And believe me When you're prone to make mistakes Love me and leave me It's an easy choice to make I'm only human And I don't know How I ever got this far Humans ain't always right Let's just be animals tonight Oh, oh, oh. But I'm gonna hold on tight And quote only Shakespeare and Einstein And if it don't come out right I'm only human And believe me We are prone to make mistakes Love me and leave me It's an easy choice to make Oh, oh, oh I'm only human And I don't know how I ever got this far Humans ain't always right So let's just be animals tonight Matt, that was amazing. Now, Thank tell you. us about that song. That song is actually still incomplete. I still have to write a bridge to that song, but it, it's yeah. um, a song that I've been performing for six, eight, six, eight months, and it's it's very requested. Among... Raw exclusive. You see this? That's right. That's right. I kind of <laughs> debut TV debut. Um, it's it's basically just about how terrible I used to be at first dates and how awkward I am and still am as I'm sitting here with you. No, yeah, you're not great. Well, thank you. But um, awkward is my game, so that's kind of what I do. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. I do awkward. Now, talking back before um, about Brian McKnight and everybody mm -hmm. else, who else did you work with or have toured with? Um, I got a chance to actually play with James Taylor three times, which is, to me, was, was absolutely one of the biggest highlights of my career as he's sitting there and I'm playing piano and singing and he's right there and I'm freaking out during I like I can barely remember because during that moment I was in awe the whole time uh I played with Stevie Wonder two years ago and uh wow you I like, fulfilled every music I'm trying that's amazing. I didn't play with Michael Jackson yet that's yet well it's, uh, you I'm know, trying to rest, get you know there okay. but you're trying to get there <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> it's gonna take yeah, a while for that. I played with Stevie a couple years ago on a television show and I mean First of all, I played keyboard. I didn't get to sing with him, but I played keyboards for him, and his keyboard parts are next level. Like, he's such an amazing piano player, and to have to mimic that, I was, again, so nervous that I barely remember the, the four-minute song that I was playing. And, and we played, I think we did My Sharia Moore and Do I Do. And I had to play four keyboards, and I was so nervous that now I probably couldn't tell you what he said to me and what happened that entire evening because I don't remember. It was just a very nerve-wracking, but at the same time, you know, all-filled experience. Christina Aguilera, what did you do yeah. for her? I sang background for Christina for a tour that unfortunately ended up getting canceled um, a little ways through. And uh, she, she was one of those girls that just got you mad because she would walk in you know, w with her coffee and she would lay down on the stage and grab the mic and blow like incredible, sing her butt off. And uh, you know, and it's, you know, one in the morning and we're rehearsing and she's just chilling and singing like. Amazing. Like, I, like, yeah, like I'm up here, I, I'm a little under the weather, so I apologize, that's why my voice is a little raspy. No, but Amazing. thank you. But she would come in here 
and like just be bored and just sing like like Aretha Franklin Part Two or whatever. Now, where can everybody look up your information as far as your tour dates, where you're going to be exactly? So the new fans that obviously you just came <laughs> <laughs> right now, they um, want to find you. Sure, sure. I'm on all the typical social uh, media networks. I'm on Twitter slash my name, Matt Cuson, M-A-T-T-C-U-S-S-O-N. Facebook slash Matt Cuson. Uh, my fan page is Facebook slash Matt Cuson Music. Matt Cuson uh, has all my tour dates and stuff. Uh, Call me. I'll tell you where <laughs> where I'm playing next. It was a pleasure. Matt, pleasure thank you mine. so much. You thank were you very amazing. Much. And thank I look you. forward to having you again on the show. I can't wait. I can't thank wait. You so thank much. you very much. It's not enough to treat me right Is it too late to question things and talk without a fight? You took the place of things that I enjoyed before Before something else, something that I needed so much more Why are you testing me? Do you plan on revising or correcting me? And if you find the wrong answer, will you let me know? I'll go back in time, find a better way to grow. My cage is open. I'm asking, please, don't steal me. My bluff when I told you I would leave, I've seen enough. I don't care what you're scared of when you're carrying all that stuff. If you're in love with the idea of something new, let me know. And I will go. I will go. My cage is open I'm asking please Don't steal me My cage is open I'm asking please Don't steal me I'm not in the business of breaking hearts anymore I retired and now my heart is sore I found a reason to lock up my need to need You found the key to you have the need to lead the free You took the place of things that I enjoyed before For something else, something that I needed so much more I'm asking these, don't steal me. My cage is open. My cage is open. My cage is open. My cage is open. Back to the new season of Raw. I'm Crystal Mestrez, and performing that was the late night champ, John Sandler. How are you, John? I'm very good, thank you. How are thank, you? I'm good, thank you for being here with me. Glad to be here. <laughs> now, tell me about My Cage is Open, that song in particular. 
Uh, My Cage is Open is a very new song. Uh, it's actually not even on our new album. It's newer than our new album. Newer than new? And newer than new. <laughs> uh, so uh, that song is kind of about uh, being with someone who loves a lot of things about you, but not everything. And you kind of get to a point where you're sort of feeling like the things that that person doesn't appreciate about you are very important to you and right. so it's kind of about being vulnerable and sort of like your cage is open like don't steal me don't steal my heart don't don't abuse the uh, vulnerability now tell me about the fancy band was that around the time that they came along so uh, yeah at the end of high school I was playing a lot and then in college I formed a band uh, with a guy Sam Merrick who's actually the current drummer in the fancy band and so then after college, I moved to New York. He was still in school, so I played um, solo for a while. And then uh, he moved to New York and kind of took it from there. And that's when we started kind of uh, playing with the band. And then only about two and a half years ago, um, the current fancy band was put together uh, with Sam and Chris Kelly, who was just playing bass. Right. Um, and an amazing piano player, Dominic Falcaro. Uh, and yeah, so the past couple of years have just been amazing. It's like finally the right group of people that feels are in your circle, and, and it's, it's been just put like it feels right. Yeah, I played with a lot of musicians over the years, uh, and it finally feels like something clicked. Okay, John, now tell us about the next song that you're going to perform for us. Uh, the next song is called "Take My Time," and it is off um, our new album called "Late Night Champ." Okay, here we go. Take my time to wash the window. I take my time to get the phone. I take my time to understand it. The things I thought I'd never know. I take my time to find the neighborhood. I take my time to find a home. I take my time to find a job I like. Where every day is not so long But I won't take my time I won't take my time with you I won't take my time I won't take my time with you I take my time to get a new car To slowly drive around this town I take my time with my obsessions To figure out it's me who's wrong now But I won't take my time I won't take my time with you I won't take my time I won't take my time with you And this is not my home This is not my, this is not my home, this is not my home. This is not my home. This is not my, this is not my home. I take my time to feel the wind blow. Let my soul have time to grow. Maybe I'll move around the country. Maybe I'll never know where to go. I won't take my time, I won't take my time with you. I won't take my time, I won't take my time with you. Easy walls and marble floors, fancy wine and stocked up bars, numbered prints and tiny mints. I take a picture of the bathroom sink, fine red wood and some big books, big white hats on foreign cooks. Busy streets that shine so bright, honking horns, you can't sleep at night. This is not my home. This is not my home. This is not my, this is not my home. This is not my home. This is not my home.
Now tell us about that song. Uh, Take My Time is kind of a song that um, two kind of ideas are combined. A lot of times when I write, I've got a lot of things going on. I might be stressed out about one thing and happy about another thing or stressed out about two things. And sometimes they meld together. So this one is, you know, obviously about um, you don't want to take your, you take your time with so many things in life. You take your time and you should, you should take your time to enjoy things, to exactly. feel the wind blow. Uh, to w clean your house, but if you're with the person that you know you should be with, you shouldn't take your time. Sort of like don't take your time um, with love and that sort of thing. So it's like I was feeling that very much. And then also um, I had just moved to New York City and was working a lot of terrible jobs, a lot of like service jobs just to get by. And I found myself in a lot of corporate buildings with paisley walls and marble floors and uh, just fake glitz and I could I just the thing that came to my mind was this is not my home and while I love New York City um I was gonna say what's wrong with New York <laughs> yeah no I love I'm the biggest <laughs> New York City fan ever but there are a lot of abrasive aspects of it that no, don't feel like I completely understand yeah that's why I live in Brooklyn What's wrong with Brooklyn? No, that's um, why I live in Brooklyn. All right. So also, um, how much of your music is 100% you or is, because sometimes artists, they, they write their music and then, but they don't make it as personal because they're scared of putting all their heart or their business out. So is it all experiences that you went through or do you talk about other people's stories as well? Or My songs are very, very personal. They're all very honest. Um, a lot of people have commented recently about how my songs are so honest that it's sometimes it's shocking that I'll just say there's a song on the album called Slow Parade and it starts off with me singing, I don't want to waste my love on you anymore. You know, it's, I want to get into that and raw we just, can get kind of personal. <laughs> Some, a heartbreak situation? Or it's, just, it's just everyone's been there where you're exactly. in a relationship yeah, right. that you know is going downhill and you feel like, I have a lot to give, and you're not the one that I want to give it to. You don't to. appreciate me. You don't so appreciate I'm about it. To be, I'm about and to be gone. I find that the best way to write is just to, if you're thinking something, I don't want to waste my love on you anymore, sing it. Down. Now, how can your fans um, find you? Twitter, Facebook? Yeah, uh, yeah we're everywhere on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash John Sandler Music. They have an amazing, amazing website, yep, by the way. John actually. Sandler.com. And he's walking in the whole, <laughs> he's walking in the whole website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him that website, exactly. John Sandler. Uh, yep, John Sandler .com. Um, and actually, that links to latenightchamp.com, okay, exactly. which is specifically a website we just made for the new album. Uh, yeah, and then I'm also on Twitter at twitter.com slash John Sandler, and we have a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, so he's everywhere, so. basically. <laughs> thank you, John. You are amazing. Oh, I look so forward much. again to seeing all your projects, and it was great. Being thank, on you. thank you. Thank you.